Why can't you lower your blood sugar without medication? In this video, we'll answer that question. Surprisingly, common solutions don't always work. We will debunk some myths and offer practical tips on how to quickly lower your blood sugar. And, most importantly, how to maintain those results over time. You'll learn. How does diabetes develop? How can you protect yourself from it? How can you tell if your blood sugar is high? What level is dangerous? And why doesn't it go down? Why should people with diabetes eat eggs and lemons? What are the issues with diabetes medications? How can you quickly lower your blood sugar? When can burdock help? And stay tuned until the end for a surprising bonus. We will reveal a shocking recipe that will drop your blood pressure immediately. How does diabetes develop? You often hear that diabetes is an incurable disease. This belief is based on a lack of understanding of how the disease progresses. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself. In this type of diabetes, the immune system destroys the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin, the hormone that controls blood sugar levels. The main cause of this type of diabetes is genetic factors, but it can also be triggered by infections and environmental factors. Fortunately, this type is rare, and in adults, it develops only in exceptional cases. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is primarily caused by lifestyle and diet. While genetic predisposition can play a role, more important factors include a high intake of carbohydrates, low physical activity, and obesity. Can diabetes go away on its own? Surprisingly, yes. In some cases, especially gestational diabetes, which develops in pregnant women due to hormonal changes, or when the pancreas or kidneys suddenly start functioning poorly. In these situations, blood sugar levels can return to normal after treating the underlying condition. How can you protect yourself? In advanced stages, diabetes treatment often involves daily insulin injections. However, it doesn't have to reach that point, even if the disease has already developed. The best approach is to follow preventative measures. One of the most important steps is to control your diet. First, reduce your intake of carbohydrates. Every food has a glycemic index based on its sugar content. The lower the index, the safer the food for people with diabetes. Second, monitor your intake of animal fats, especially processed meats. Third, Make sure to consume enough quality protein by including lean meats, nuts, seeds, and legumes in your diet. Fiber intake is also crucial for maintaining healthy metabolism, so eat plenty of green vegetables and low-sugar fruits. The fourth key factor in preventing and managing early-stage diabetes is physical activity. Studies show that maintaining daily physical activity and a moderate body weight can significantly slow the progression of the disease. How can you tell if your blood sugar is high? There are several unpleasant symptoms that indicate high blood sugar. The first signs include increased appetite and thirst that can't be quenched even with plenty of water. Other symptoms are rapid weight gain or loss, flaky, excessively dry skin, slow healing of cuts, wounds, and burns, low body temperature and sweating, frequent urges to urinate, frequent spikes in blood pressure, dental problems, and bad breath, issues with kidney and bowel function. These symptoms are often seen in the early stages of diabetes. Ignoring them can lead to more severe health problems. What blood sugar level is dangerous and why doesn't it go down? It's important for everyone, not just those at risk of diabetes, to monitor blood sugar levels. In children, the acceptable range is between 3.5 and 5.5 millimoles per liter. For adults, it's 3.3 to 5.9 millimoles per liter. Blood sugar levels can fluctuate by up to 10% throughout the day, which is normal for some people, including diabetics, athletes, and those with serious liver conditions. Blood glucose levels can rise up to 8 millimoles per liter without showing any symptoms. However, as levels continue to increase, significant changes in the body's acid-base balance can occur, leading to the symptoms mentioned earlier. Without immediate action, this can progress to a comatose state where the person does not respond to stimuli. 
If you monitor your blood sugar and it regularly falls between 5.6 and 6.9 millimoles per liter, consult a doctor. This range indicates prediabetes. What do people with diabetes need? Every doctor prescribes a strict diet for people diagnosed with diabetes, requiring a reduction in carbohydrates and fats. The reason for limiting fats is that they can lead to cholesterol buildup, which in turn affects carbohydrate processing. Following this diet can be challenging. First, not all sweet foods have the same glycemic index, which is a crucial factor in assessing a food's impact on insulin production. Second, Limiting fatty and carbohydrate-rich foods can lower the calorie content of your diet, making it harder to feel full, especially if you're used to high-calorie foods. Additionally, people with diabetes need to get a full range of vitamins, which are abundant in fruits, but many fruits are also high in sugars. How can you resolve this dilemma? Two foods can help solve these problems, lemons and eggs. Lemons are one of the few fruits with a low glycemic index of just 15, while people with diabetes are advised to eat foods with a glycemic index below 50. Lemons are also rich in vitamins, macro, and microelements, which boost resistance to infections. A key benefit for people with diabetes who often have weakened immune systems. Lemons also help remove excess cholesterol, improve blood vessel health, and lower blood pressure making them essential for regulating metabolic processes. Why should people with diabetes eat eggs and lemons? The main benefit of these foods is their ability to stimulate insulin production. Plus, eggs contain no sugars and are packed with beneficial vitamins. They regulate the digestive system and help detoxify the body. However, eggs are also high in calories and contain fats, so it's important to limit your intake. The recommended daily amount for an adult is one or two eggs. Interestingly, quail eggs have a better vitamin and mineral profile than chicken eggs, so they are even more beneficial. But chicken eggs also positively affect the pancreas. How do eggs and lemons work together? These foods have a combined effect that addresses several issues. First, they improve cholesterol and glucose processing. Second, they provide the body with essential vitamins and minerals. Third, they help cleanse the intestines, pancreas, and liver of toxins. Fourth, they strengthen the immune system. Even conventional medicine sometimes recommends using these foods alongside pharmaceutical treatments. Eggs also help you recover quickly from fractures due to their high calcium content, and lemon with egg can improve skin condition. But to achieve these benefits, you need to prepare natural remedies from eggs and lemon properly. How to use eggs and lemons for treatment. For diabetes, try this recipe. Wash a lemon, cut it in half, and squeeze the juice into a separate container. You should get about 50 milliliter of juice from one lemon. In another container, crack one egg. If you prefer quail eggs, use five instead of one chicken egg. Add the lemon juice to the eggs, mix until smooth, and eat the mixture half an hour before a meal. Take this mixture once a day for three days, then take a three-day break and repeat. The full treatment course is one month. After a short break, you can repeat the course if needed. Who should avoid this remedy? Avoid using this remedy if you have allergies to lemons or eggs, kidney, stomach, or intestinal issues, extremely high cholesterol levels, or sharp spikes in blood glucose. In these situations, you should consult a doctor as lemon juice can irritate already damaged stomach linings, and the fat in eggs may be harmful if cholesterol levels are critically high. There are three common and dangerous myths about lowering blood sugar. The buckwheat myth. Many people believe that buckwheat helps lower blood sugar. In reality, buckwheat is a slow carbohydrate, and like other grains, it can raise blood sugar levels. To lower blood sugar effectively, it's better to increase your intake of quality protein, low-carb vegetables, and healthy fats, while reducing carbs like buckwheat. The fasting myth. Some believe that fasting can help lower blood sugar. However, during fasting, the liver releases glycogen, which can cause a sharp rise in blood sugar levels. The fat myth. Many people think fats are harmful. However, not all fats are the same. Animal fats, like butter or lard, 
can raise cholesterol levels when consumed excessively. In contrast, plant-based oils such as olive or pine nut oil are healthy and don't affect cholesterol. Fish oil, rich in omega-3, helps lower cholesterol, strengthen blood vessels, and has anti-inflammatory properties. Therefore, to maintain a healthy blood sugar level, focus on limiting carbs and increasing healthy fats, especially plant-based oils and fish oil. But do you need to take medications? And what should you consider when taking them? Diabetes medications. It's not that simple. Doctors prescribe many medications to treat diabetes. The main goal of most of these drugs is to keep blood sugar levels stable and combat insulin resistance. The effectiveness of these medications is well established. So what's the problem? First, many of these drugs only control blood sugar. They don't cure diabetes. Second, they can have side effects that worsen kidney or heart conditions, which are already at risk due to diabetes. So what should you do? The answer is simple. Choose medications carefully, considering not just diabetes but your overall health. While common medications like sulfonylureas, only lower glucose levels, and metformin affects insulin sensitivity, drugs like dapagliflozin and empagliflozin remove excess fluid from the body and positively impact heart and kidney health in cases of chronic failure. These drugs can help maintain stable health conditions for longer. Another group of drugs, glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists, has a crucial benefit. They help regulate appetite. This makes it easier for people to eat fewer calorie-dense foods, leading to weight loss. And since excess weight is a major factor in diabetes development, it's clear that endocrinologists should consider not just the most common medications for lowering blood sugar, but also choose drugs that improve overall health. Quickly Lowering Blood Sugar Here are some simple home remedies to quickly and safely lower your blood sugar. We'll look at three popular methods. Recipe number one. Take one tablespoon of regular buckwheat and grind it into a powder using a mortar or another tool. Mix the ground buckwheat with 200 milliliter of room temperature kefir and let it sit overnight. In the morning, drink the mixture and prepare a new one in the evening. Repeat daily if your blood sugar remains high until it drops to a normal level. Recipe number two. Take one tablespoon of flax seeds in powder form. Pour 200 milliliter of boiled water over the seeds and let them steep for 40 minutes. Squeeze the juice of half a lemon into the mixture. Stir well and drink it without straining. If necessary, prepare and drink the mixture the next day if you feel your blood sugar rising. Recipe number three. Pour eight to 10 bay leaves into a cup of boiling water. Transfer the infusion to a thermos and let it steep for 24 hours. Drink a quarter cup three times a day half an hour before meals. Take the infusion for three to six days. This should help normalize high blood sugar. What to do if the disease progresses? If diabetes continues to develop and diet changes alone aren't enough, you can try a time-tested German remedy, nettle tea. To make it, you'll need half a liter of water and 25 grams of nettle roots. Pour boiling water over the nettle roots and simmer for a couple of minutes on low heat. Then, remove from heat and strain. To reduce the bitter taste of nettle roots, add berries or spices to the tea to taste. Drink the tea throughout the day. Thanks to its flavonoids and phenolic compounds, nettle can lower blood sugar and improve overall immune health. How can burdock root help people with diabetes? Take a look at scientific research. Experiments on animals have shown that consuming 200 milliliter of burdock root extract daily helps maintain stable insulin production and speeds up sugar processing in the body. How to use burdock. For digestive issues and overall immune support, pour 300 milliliter of boiling water over one tablespoon of chopped burdock root and let it steep in a thermos for two hours. Drink this remedy three times a day before meals. Remember that this remedy doesn't work instantly. For chronic conditions, you'll need to drink burdock juice or decoction for six months or even a year. For cholecystitis and liver diseases, the course is shorter, just seven days, but it should be repeated three times with a one-week break in between. Burdock has almost no contraindications, which is why it's a staple in the Japanese diet. 
However, pregnant women should avoid it. And because it has diuretic properties, use caution when combining it with other diuretics to avoid amplifying their effects. A simple method to control diabetes without pills and injections. There is a simple and accessible method to fight high blood sugar. All you need is apple cider vinegar. Made from fermented apple juice, it turns into ethanol and then vinegar through the action of acetic acid bacteria. The main advantage of apple cider vinegar is its ability to improve insulin sensitivity. For people with type 1 diabetes who don't produce enough insulin, apple cider vinegar can enhance insulin's effects. For those with type 2 diabetes where insulin is less effective, acetic acid helps lower blood sugar by counteracting insulin resistance. It's recommended to dilute two tablespoons of vinegar in 300 milliliter of water and drink it throughout the day before meals. Be sure to drink this mixture through a straw to protect your tooth enamel. Regularly consuming apple cider vinegar requires monitoring blood sugar levels, and you may need to adjust your medication dosage since vinegar can significantly lower blood sugar. Remember to use only natural, unfiltered, and unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. Bonus recipe. Here's the promised bonus. It's a method for lowering blood sugar that many people haven't heard of. Hydrogen peroxide inhalations. The inhalation process is simple. Pour hot water into a basin. It should be hot enough to produce steam, but not so hot that it burns your airways. Add a teaspoon of 3% hydrogen peroxide to the basin and inhale the steam for 10 to 15 minutes. To make the inhalation more effective and keep the water from cooling down too quickly, Cover yourself with a sheet during the process. You can find many interesting videos about the benefits and harms of vegetables and fruits, as well as diseases and their treatments. So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon.